for some reason, one word stuck in my head when you when you mentioned that that Dave would be uh, an interesting guest. The word agnostic stuck in my head, and 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 yeah. F- f- yeah. I, I, nothing else. I, you know. Well, remember, and and uh, you know, if you ever want to, you want to hear a little bit about microbiology or any of that. That's you know area oh, yeah, of specialty. Yeah, yeah. So he'll Indeed. he'll dive into that too. But I'm sure we'll get there. You know, I I don't have any doubt. So you know, uh, it, it's the uh, it's funny. <laughs> I, I, I don't know you. You haven't had a chance to to read the intro that that, that I wrote. No, I scanned it really fast. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, I mean, yes, it, yes, it's right it, 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 it really is. It's agnostics will always ask a well. In, in my notes, I, I refer to the fact that how, how did I put this? Uh, in the back of my mind, agnostics are always the ones shaking their heads and shrugging at me and my atheistic certainty. <laughs> My my certainty yeah, yeah, about yeah. uncertainty. Yeah, yeah. And, and and to me, that is really what this comes down to. It's another question about another view of, of certainty versus uncertainty. This right. is the right. uncertainty versus uncertainty point of view. Yeah, and I'm really, I'm interested to hear more about uh, why he chose agnosticism, like what that journey was as well, because... You know, that's one of the things that always intrigues me about folks that are agnostic too, is is what what's got you kind of from another point of view, kind of in between the two. What what made you say that's the place you want to locate yourself? Here's I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna stick a marker down. Um all right, I'm gonna stick a marker down that he will not he will he will he would not say that he chose agnosticism. Yeah. He had no choice. Okay, interesting. Okay. That'll be interesting to see. Uh, yeah. All right. Okay. So, so, All right. And here, here's our pre-show. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode number 35 of the Faithism Project podcast. My name is Alan Katz, and I have always been grateful to Hebrew School for making me the atheist I am today. And I am Randy Lovejoy, a pastor without a church, which allows me to do all sorts of fun things online, including being involved in this podcast and today's conversation. I'm really looking forward to it. Today we are talking about the Zen of agnosticism. Uh, Now, from a religious point of view, agnostics, uh, agnostics, from a religious point of view, agnostics are no better than atheists. Now, from an atheist point of view, agnostics are kind of wishy-washy. And both of them, both of us, have it all wrong about agnostics, as we're about to learn. If you stop to think about it, and that's exactly what we're going to do, agnostics are the most honest people among us when it comes to thinking, because they're simply asking one question. Can you prove it? If you can't prove it, You can't say it's entirely true. Well, today's today we have a guest, uh, a guy named Dave Wortlieb, and uh, Dave is going to well, he's going to tell us about his journey. He is a uh, he describes himself as an agnostic Jew. He is uh, well, he'll tell his story, but he was a uh, a teacher of uh, biology, yeah, uh, microbiology. Microbiology. Thank you. Yeah. At a, a community college outside of San Diego for thirty-four years. Mm-hmm. Twenty-five of those, he ran the biology department, chaired it. So uh, this guy's done a lot of thinking. Oh, and, and I have to throw this in. He, he you know, I'm kind of shaking my family tree right now for the the whole podcast deal. He, he, he actually is the father of a woman who is my sister-in-law. And so one of the reasons I was excited- Full transparency here. That's right. One of the reasons I wanted to get him on this podcast is that we've had amazing conversations at some family gatherings, Thanksgiving, yes, even Christmas, uh, some different gatherings, and our conversations have just been wonderful, I think, it, for both of us. And it so is, it is an important an important footnote as to why Dave is our guest today. Yeah. And it's the fact that he's an agnostic suddenly yep. made it a, a great topic for, for conversation. It all started with conversations that you, Randy, had with Dave. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it's the notion that one can we can reach across these divides really without even thinking about it. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, hey, without any further ado, why don't we uh, bring Dave into the conversation? Let's do it. His, Let's his, do it. I was sitting here talking about the poor guy. Welcome, Dave. Thank you for waiting in the in the green room for us. Uh, we're excited to have you here. Uh, how how are the refreshments? Uh, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. We we just had the machine refilled. Oh, good. I, I, it tasted fresh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, okay. uh, Randy was uh, described a little bit about uh, how how you came to us. Okay. The the, yeah. the, the familial connection that uh, that brought right. you into contact with with Randy and. Uh, yeah. I was trying to think of when we first met, but I mean, would it have been at the wedding or? Uh, I don't remember if it was before the wedding. Or yeah, I'm not sure either. either. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, what what kind of wedding was it? We uh, what kind of wedding are you talking about? There were you know it's been a long time. <laughs> Well, the, the way the Randy was referring to it. quite a long time. <laughs> that's it's right. That's been, right. Um, it's been uh, it's been twenty years. Yeah, yeah. His daughter and my brother in law uh, were married. Uh, and where was it? It was out. Where was the location? Uh, oh. At her at the Golden's house out in the, um, um, uh, near um, uh, Santa Rosa. Uh, not Santa Rosa. Uh, I'm blanking. Um, in near in near North of LA, North of L.A. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. In Ventura, the edge of Ventura County, um, and and not, and not yeah. Simi Valley, more Park, Simi Valley, that area. Sure, sure, sure. sure. And Walter, a uh, previous guest, uh, officiated, officiated. Uh, at yeah. the wedding. So yeah, yeah. that's he right. Officiated at the wedding. He and was Alice. honored to be asked by his son and future daughter-in-law to perform the ceremony. He was that's very right. honored to do that. Yep. Yeah, it was, uh, it was a very it was uh, an amazing experience as actually I thought so. And and since then we've had uh, many times uh, at different uh, kind of gatherings uh, family of, gathering. of family, yeah. uh, and uh, Dave's known for uh, his mashed potatoes uh, among other things, garlic, uh, mashed the garlic mashed potatoes that are mind blowingly good, and uh, and uh, and then we've we've just gotten to have multiple conversations uh, over those years as well, which I've always really valued, uh, and oh, and sorry. thoroughly enjoyed. Um, so. my, my, my wife would call those talks and she enjoyed the talks with Walter that she had. Uh, yes. She said, oh, goody, we're going to have God talk. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, right. See, this is, this is so counterintuitive because we've always been, you know, we're, we've been taught culturally that this is a subject to avoid. Um, well, we, we, uh, we dove right in. <laughs> That's right. We were very comfortable being together and uh, comfortable uh, in the knowledge of um, how we uh, brought to the table our own experiences and backgrounds, and it was always a positive thing to look forward to. And you know, I, but 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 I think there, there there's something in, in what you just said. It's it's when one has confidence in what one brings to you know, a a conversation of differences. Correct. Where the the point of the the point of the discussion isn't it's not an argument. Exactly. It, it's it, it there's no argument to win here. It's a here are my experiences. What are your experiences? That's very interesting. Right. It's and, and one of the things I've enjoyed as well is that Dave's invited uh, uh, our uh, a, a number of folks uh, to some of the Shabbat. Uh, well, what would you call the Zoom get-togethers? Uh, um, well, this was Jessica's idea, my daughter's idea. Okay. Um, when COVID hit and everything shut down, because we had never done this before on a regular basis, we we never celebrated the usual Shabbat thing on a Friday night before, but. <laughs> Uh, Jessica said, you know, why don't we have the family get together on Zoom and just say the three blessings? And uh, so we agreed. And so it was um, Jessica, Eric, and Ethan, my daughter, son-in-law, grandson, my other daughter who lives in Ojai, California, and uh, a cousin from the Bay who lives in the Bay Area, uh, cousin Charlie, uh, who used to attend regularly come down for our Thanksgiving gatherings, actually. And um, so what we do every Friday, um, we chit-chat for a little bit. 
And then we say the, we light the candles and say the blessing. We drink the wine and say the blessing. And we break, uh, we break bread, you know, uh, and say the blessing. And that's basically it. And then we go off and have our dinners or whatever. Now, and, uh, it's, because, it's really sweet. Because yeah, now you, it you, you, the connection. You, you, you said, Dave, that prior to the pandemic, this was not something that, that you did. You, you were not, you did not observe the Sabbath on, uh, on a regular basis. You... Well, not in that way. I mean, what has happened is, um, especially with uh, Louise, my other half, um, she has a very strong tie in the congregation that we belong to. Mm -hmm. And there is, um, it's a very big synagogue. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is every Saturday morning at that synagogue, uh, what I call, uh, the synagogue is named, it's called Beth Israel. And what I call the counterculture at Beth Israel, because uh, in addition to the big regular service, there's this, in this really, the only nice spot on this huge campus is, a, it's a chapel and it's a, it's a gorgeous little structure. And there's a service called the Minion Service, meaning the gathering of 10. Yeah, of the 10, yeah. Uh, and it's lay led. You can wear blue jeans if you want to. A rabbi never shows up. Yeah, you just need 10. It's been going on for 25 years. And mm -hmm. that's, that's been Shabbat for it, her. And I join in every now and then. And um, it's, a, you know, I, it's something I've come to understand about uh, what it means to be Jewish, I guess, for me. It's a when, when 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 you said the 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 counterculture in in a within a reformed congregation, it 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 makes me laugh because all right, I I I grew up Jewish. I I, I grew up uh, in a, a a conservative Jewish household uh, congregation, and uh, you know we 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 thought the Orthodox were crazy, and we thought the Reform were were, were Christians. <laughs> So, so to hear, you know, to hear that there's which a means you thought really highly. You, you thought really highly of the reformed Jews. That I take it uh, is is that what you meant? <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm I'm giving away cultural you better stop here. I'm talking now about that <laughs> right <I know>. now. <laughs> the whole rest of the tribe is going to have to kill me now for what I That's just right. gave away. Yeah, yes. you you can't you can't tell people about that. No, I'm oh, kidding. Lips I'm are kidding. Sealed. Even though this is a podcast that's going to go everywhere, our lips are sealed. <laughs> that's right that's right i never said this this is this is uh one of those uh, yeah this thing no, that, but i i understand your history with that yes uh no it, it's it's and dave dave where did you grow up i grew up in the bronx in new york oh, okay. city okay and uh i grew up baltimore 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 okay East Coast, uh, so East East Coast Jews as opposed to these West so, Coast so Jews. So that that says it all in a sense. <laughs> um, and um, it, I grew up. Uh, family was Jewish, but I was totally secular. The entire family was totally secular. Never looked at the inside of a synagogue ever. Nope. However, um, something must have implanted because uh, my father's mother, my paternal grandmother, the matriarch of the family, insisted, this is a totally secular, no shul, no synagogue anywhere in sight. She insisted that her three grandsons had to have bar mitzvahs. Hmm. And she provided the talis and the other stuff, you know, and we did, and I did. Yeah, and I the went other to a modern orthodox synagogue in the neighborhood for two years to yeah. learn yeah. how to become a bar mitzvah. Yeah. And um, honestly, the day of the bar mitzvah, I walked out of that door and never looked back yeah. because it didn't signify anything to me. Yeah, 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 yeah. But something implanted. And um, but it's not the but it's not a religious. All right, let me ask. The thing that that was implanted, because, hey, I, I, in my conservative household, my, we were entirely secular. Yeah, we went to the high holiday services. Yeah, we went to 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 Friday to Friday night if there was a bat mitzvah, Saturday if there was a bar mitzvah. <clears throat> Otherwise, hey, and but I went to Hebrew school for gosh, from the age of six to the age of fourteen. I went to Hebrew school. I was absolutely indoctrinated, but not in, the. Well, I I, mean, what was that seed? I, I'm kind of interested in what, what well, was... Well, I, 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 this is kind of what, what I'm getting at. The, okay, okay. 
I absolutely believe that I, I dropped from the womb an atheist. But every but I, I am grateful to my Hebrew school education for yeah, for for finalizing the deal. For giving you the wiggle room to be able to be comfortable being Jewish and being an atheist at the same time. But but this is but this is the thing. And and this is this is my question because Judaism is not just a religion. Yes, it is a religion you can practice, but I, when one is born into Judaism, it's not like being born into Catholicism or any, or, or, or Protestantism, you know, Jews, hey, there's a genetic disease that we carry, Tay-Sachs, Tay-Sachs. Oh, but that's a separate matter. Okay. Well, yeah, yes, yes, yes. That's, that, but, that's, but, uh, you're talking to someone who taught genetics for a long time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but, but there's, oh, but. Be careful where you carry that. Yes, 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 but, but. Okay. <laughs> under understood but but this is something that is within me it is it but that thing is a tie to my culture because that ca that is a lot of where my culture came from from those shtetls which is where yes. the tay sachs came from but understand let's let's not confuse two things um, I would hesitate to say it's in the genes when you're talking about being Jewish. And, 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 it's and, and, and I agree with you. thing that you learn hmm. from your parents. Uh, you grew up in a Jewish household regardless of how secular it was, hmm. and that implanted something. That was learned. It was not inborn. Oh, you know, be a little bit careful about... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, 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 but I'm pointing out simply that... This is something that, that in a way it binds me in a way to my culture. That I like better. Okay, it is, it is a, it is something biochemical inside of me that that. Where that came from, is where I came from, and it's nothing to do with the religion, and everything to do with the culture. I agree. That grew out of the religion. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. But then transcended the religion. Uh, and and this is the thing, and this is why, in my opinion, being an atheist, being an agnostic, these these are not do, these do not put one outside of being a Jew. They I can't. Agree, totally. They can't. Mm -hmm. And they can't even put you outside of Judaism. Okay. Because the nature of Judaism really says, well, rabbinical Judaism, which is the Judaism that that flowed once, once the temple was destroyed by by the Romans, yeah, the the rabbinical Judaism that 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 you and I are the product of, says question away. Yeah, I I, I agree with that. Um, All right, there are two things that come to mind about please. Me. Okay, one is um, uh, I'm going to be I'm going to play Torah scholar now. Give me. Give me a little uh, lead on this, okay? I've I've laid the groundwork. Okay. Roll. You, okay. Um, in the Torah story, in Genesis, mm -hmm. uh, Jacob Yaakov uh -huh. at some point wrestles with an angel. Yeah. And at the end of that, uh, he is renamed. He is given a different name, and his new name which then appears in the rest of the of Genesis off and on, they keep exchanging the names, is Yisrael, Israel. Jacob is renamed Israel. Hmm. And it's a recognition in a sense that he's the grandson of Abraham. He is one of the patriarchs. He's the progenitor of blah, blah, blah. Okay. But what does Yaakov mean in Hebrew, literally? Hmm. It means wrestles with God. Mm. And what that means is that this is part of what it means to be Jewish. Yes. That it's okay to question, challenge, wrestle with God, and that strengthens who you are, mm. in a sense. And uh, when, I Amen, first, brother. when I first read that story and heard that interpretation, boing, you know, I said, now, there's one interesting reason why I feel comfortable being Jewish, because mm. I always, you know, 
I'm an agnostic. I call myself an agnostic. What does that mean? Uh, whatever it means, and we can talk about that later if you want to. But oh, we uh, plan to. But it means, um, you know, I can challenge hmm. traditional concepts about God, and still be very comfortably considered Jewish and consider myself Jewish. Hmm. And there's nothing, there's no conflict there. It's hmm. part of the deal, and uh, that makes me happy. <laughs> but. Um, I separate for myself. I separate in terms of my development, I guess, as uh, my latest favorite word is sentient being. I'm a sentient being. I, I like that term a lot. I, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I like that term uh, a lot. It's my, it's my word of the month, sentient. Okay. Um, and um, I separate. I, you, you have kind of forced me to think about this very carefully as I've been thinking about this uh -oh. thing. Uh, Apologies. I separate how I became an agnostic and how I thought of myself as agnostic and how I thought of myself and think of myself as being Jewish. Hmm. I mean, I've li you've linked atheist Jew and I've linked agnostic Jew, but for me, they're actually two separate tracks. Being agnostic and why I consider myself agnostic is just something that um, I when I real when I was old enough to realize what the word agnostic meant, I knew that that's what I was. Sure, 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 sure. You no, know, it had nothing to do with being Jewish. Yeah, nothing to do with being Jewish at all. It's a very ancient, ancient way of thinking. The Hindus had yeah. a word for and 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 yeah, it's very close to it. There's a word in Sanskrit. Which there was a whole school of teaching, you know, the Hindu teaching going back thousands of years that that said we cannot know. Right. And uh, I like that phrase that you use. And I noticed you used it when you were talking with Walter. You said, I don't know is the answer. And that's a very agnostic answer. Okay? Yes. I don't <laughs> yes. Know. And it applies in terms of uh, yeah. concept, thinking about God, the God concept. Hmm. And it also applies... Well, this is a separate podcast, maybe in the future. It also applies to science and our sure. understanding of sure. the natural world. I don't know. If you don't have the facts, you don't have an answer, that's fine. It's yes. okay. I don't know is okay to say if you don't know. Hmm. No, don't shy away from that. Okay. So that's agnostic. That's uh, in one box. Now let's talk about, and stop me if I'm babbling, but. Um, Let's talk about me. That's, that's what we do here, Dave. That's okay, what we do. Okay. Uh, let's talk about my journey to becoming a Jew, being mm -hmm. aware of being a Jew. Okay. And that didn't really happen uh, until I became a parent. Okay. Uh, my wife and I both grew up in the Bronx, you know, uh, we always knew you we were Jewish. My, my wife had a little bit more experience with affiliation through her parents with the synagogue, but I never did. And so we, we came together. We were Jewish. We knew we were Jewish. We had a Jewish ceremony for a wedding. And so we're Jewish. No big deal. You know, we don't, we don't do Shabbat. We don't even do the High Holy Day. We don't do any of that, but we're Jewish. It's we not, it is, Jewish. none of it is required. It's none of it so, is required. Uh, we become parents, Jessica, mm -hmm. uh, and then Lisa. And um, we made the assumption, Marty, and Randy knew Marty. So uh, when I talk about Marty, he knows exactly who I'm talking about and everything that goes with that name, Marty. Okay. Um, so, we had a kid and our assumption was, okay, we're Jewish, so the kid is Jewish, period, end of story. About the time, and Jessica was a really perceptive, sharp kid, and she still is a very perceptive, sharp person as a, I can't believe I'm saying this, I'm the father of two 50 plus kids now at this point. Uh, <laughs> Uh, when Jessica was about in the thir third or fourth grade, I think this is when this happened, uh, we were in the habit of at night when she went to bed, I would go in and we'd sit and talk for a little bit before she went off to sleep. And one night uh, she started asking me, she's a third grader, right? And she starts asking me all of these questions. And it ranged all the way from 
why am I different from other kids, to what's the KKK? Whole range of questions. Well, I got to tell you, I crawled out of that room last night, that night. I crawled out of that room. And Marty and I had a talk. Okay, um, this isn't working. If we want our kids to be Jewish, just us saying we're Jewish so you're Jewish doesn't do it. What does it mean? What do we do? Yeah, what, 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 so, is, what, does, that, what does that mean, in fact? Um, well, it meant being, uh, understand. it meant for us that hmm. the kid understood what it meant to be Jewish hmm. and um, being comfortable with that, not uncomfortable with Of course. It. Now, how do you go about instilling that? Ah, that was the question. So we figured, okay, you know, we were not uh, big on the edifice complex stuff. We really were not into joining a synagogue at that point. And so he said, okay, well... Overkill, we, overkill. We put together, we actually, with some like-minded families, we put together an independent group. Um, in Hebrew, it's called a Havara, uh, mm -hmm. friendship circle, basically. Uh, and we thought that that would, if we came together and celebrated holidays and talked about Jewish, that that would be a good way to do it. And it turned out it was terrific for the adults, but the kids were not involved except when we celebrated in a holiday. We actually did put together for one of the kids our own a bar mitzvah for one kid, which was a terrific experience, but it wasn't working. So we, we joined a synagogue and we joined a synagogue where we got really good vibes and the kids grew up in that synagogue and my wife, Marty, uh, she eventually really dove in and she eventually became the principal of the Torah school there and a very, very well-respected Jewish educator in San Diego County. But um, what did the synagogue think, have that you were not able to do yourselves, even though you had all the cultural knowledge? The magic word is a community. And what we realized was, and this was one of my wife's mantras when, and she, you know, as a Jewish educator, she was, I was always in awe of her as a people person. She could, the way she interacted with parents of kids, the kids themselves, other adults in, in different situations where she taught or interacted, her mantra was in America, which is, even though it's secular, separation of church and state, basically religiously, America is a Christian country in theme. In, it's just a Christian country. If we want, you want to be Jewish in America, you need to be part of some kind of a Jewish community. And that's what happened with the girls at the synagogue. And the, 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 there were two big experiences that were wonderful in terms of the girls and locking them in to being comfortable being Jewish. One was once a month, there was what we call family Shabbat at the synagogue. Mm -hmm. And what it meant was before the service, uh, families would gather in the social hall, bring your own food, potluck, pizza's okay, as long as it's not pepperoni or sausage, and, um, um, uh, you know, um, uh, the kernel is fine, and we would, very, a lot of us would bring our own food and share, and with families, it was a family experience, the rabbi and his wife and kids were there, and they led what would ever needed to be done, and that really clicked. It really uh, embedded. Uh, and then um, uh, summer camp, a Jewish summer camp, was a big experience for the girls. Sure. And it clicked. And it's I, it's I, like immersion. I, it took. Let's sure. Put it that way. Jessica is Jewish. Uh, grandson Ethan is Jewish. Eric is totally supportive of that. The Rays and the Lovejoys, uh, as part of the extended family, they are really locked into understanding that. You know, we have a wonderful mutuality about that, understanding our backgrounds. Uh, my younger daughter, Lisa, is gone off in a different direction in her life, but uh, she is definitely um, seeked in her comfort level being Jewish. It, and that's, it, when I, that's when I realized that's what you need. If you want to be comfortable being Jewish, you need to become part of a Jewish community. Uh, it does transcend 
religious doctrine. It is it is a it is a cultural thing. It is a cultural thing. Uh, hey, and just a, just a couple of thoughts uh, from the Christian slash Reformed Jewish side uh, of the equation. No, I'm kidding. Um, but a, a couple of <laughs> a couple of things from the from from the Christian side. That's just it's fascinating to me in in listening to the conversation thus far. Is is you know the the separation you're making, Dave, between uh, your your Jewishness and your agnosticism. Um, it, it's it's an interesting. I've never thought of it quite this way because as a as a Christian, uh, I'm not. I can't really make that same division because whenever it was that the first person in my family tree became a Christian, they left behind their uh, community based religious faith, et cetera. You know, that there was a big conversion from whatever it was that my relatives in the British Isles, whenever it was that they became Christian, when they became Christian. Uh, and then the other part of it that's an interesting dynamic is that, that you know, when Christians think deeply enough about it, the concept is that we were kind of grafted into the Jewish culture's faith, obviously it's taken a different turn. I'm, I'm not talking about that, but, but the roots of Christianity are distinctly Jewish. And as a non-Jew, it's, you know, I am grafted into this thing. Um, uh, so it's, it's a different, it's kind of a different setup. So it's like, if I'm an agnostic, then why would I be a Christian? Uh. Okay. Where because Christian is something different than Jewish is at least in the conversation we've heard about, it. and it's just kind of interesting to me. Um, it's I, just different, just because I think, I, I think there's a the um, the connection is um, what's the phrase the term uh, the three Abrahamic faiths. Yes, yeah. that's yeah. the phrase. Yeah. They all have the same root. They yep. all have that same connection, and they've gone in different directions in how, the, in what the God concept is. In th in th it's a three different directions, basically. Um, and, uh, but, it, but there, there is a connection because of the one God concept, the Abraham, and that's yep. why they're the, they're the Abrahamic faiths. But, yep. um, Anyway, yeah. uh, that but is, you know, I, I think community, I, I see your point. I really, yeah, do. yeah. It's it's it, it, so to me, being an atheist and a Christian doesn't make sense. Being an agnostic and a Christian doesn't make sense. But primarily, it's because when I say I'm a Christian, I'm talking about my faith. Uh, although it also then becomes part of a community, but it's not a, it's not a, an, it's not a community that goes as deep um, in my you, family tree. You don't wrestle with God. Well, I, I would say. And I'll be a little provocative here. But there you, you go. No, because I mean, I've always loved the passage with Jacob that you mentioned because, because there is a feeling in uh, many churches that it's like, well, when you're a Christian, you shouldn't wrestle anymore. It's like you're done with the wrestling. Well, Christians want to let God win. Well, but but the thing is, for me, that's not where my Christianity has grown the most. It's actually become deeper when I do wrestle versus when I just swallow whole what other people give me. Andy, what do you wrestle with? That's uh, If you use the word wrestle, sure. and you're talking as a Christian, what do you mean by the word wrestle here? Well, I, I would say there have been different wrestling bouts uh in my life <laughs> different different opponents greco roman what are we talking about sumo <laughs> that's right. no, no but, nude wrestling here please please don't say that's that. Right, that's that. right. no. but no like like in college uh there was a big wrestling match in college when i was a religion major in a school that was definitely agnostic to atheist in the religion department not to mention the whole school but uh but at the same time i was part of a, a christian group that I had helped start and lead, but I was also being challenged in a class, interestingly enough, called Theists and Atheists, taught by a professor who was at a super conservative college in undergrad, and then went far the other direction in her graduate studies. So we had a great rapport, 
but I was being, I was, there were all sorts of questions that were being thrown at me from deep philosophers and thinkers and, you know, meeting Nietzsche and, and, and Feuerbach, where it's all just a projection. And, and I didn't have answers to those questions. So there was a struggle there between what I knew was going on in the group with my friends and seeing people's lives get better, but also knowing that I didn't have the philosophical answers to make that make sense. So what I'm hearing you say in terms of who you or who or what you're wrestling with is it wasn't a wrestling. The Jewish concept is wrestling with God, wrestling yeah. with the God concept. What yeah. you're saying, what I'm hearing you say is you were wrestling with um, other versions of belief about God. So and justifications, kind of justifications for the belief I already had. I would say my struggle with God was, was, yeah, it wasn't a struggle because God won and overpowered me to the point that there wasn't a struggle because it was when my, my family fell apart in high school and then I moved to college. And so I didn't have any of my friends from high school because I was in high school in London and college in the US and everybody was scattered. And there was just kind of nothing left in my life. Uh, and that was when I decided, okay, this faith that my parents had brought me up in, I'm going to make that the center of my life. So it was almost, rather than being a, a, a battle, it was more like, I'm already defeated. Is there anything left I can grab hold of to make any sense out of life? And that's well. where, and, yeah, and, and that's where it, that's where it kind of started. And, uh, and so there've been different battles, like when I was living in other countries and, saw Christianity done well or horribly, there were struggles with that. Like, how can this be, how can there be so many charlatans out there, you know, in the Christian world? Uh, or when I was in seminary and I saw so many leaders, suddenly you got kind of the inside knowledge. So you knew more and more of the leaders that were looked great on the outside, but had major failings that would show up and cause catastrophe. And so that was another one was, was just the struggle with, well, if this is something that's of God, why are there so many people messing this thing up left, right, and center? Um, but I hear you. I mean, I, th I think the dynamic was different, but again, I think part of it goes back to the fact that I, I though my parents went to church, I was still, I'm an, you know, I was, had an Anglo-Saxon heritage, right? Well, but that didn't mean much to me, except it was just a historical novelty because we didn't have anything that we did together as a family that celebrated our Anglo-Saxon heritage, which you may be thankful for because the only ones I've seen that do that tend toward the neo-fascist and Nazi. But, 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 but in essence, you know, it's, it's in, in terms of, of, of a culture, you know, it's, uh, it's, it, it, it's, it's not a question of judging it. It's a question of this is the culture that flowed. Yeah. And, but, but it's just like in my family's life, it was like Christianity was grafted in and we left England for the United States a few generations back. Yes. So the heritage really faded away and it was just more like, Oh, I'm an American. Am I going to be a Christian or not? I don't know. I have to decide that, you know, that sort of which thing is, which is a different dynamic. But, 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 but both of those are really fascinating because, because Dave and I come from something that is, as right. we've discussed, steeped in both. I mean, we are, right. we are absolutely right. it, it's, and, and we are prisoners of both in a way. But that's where, you know, Walker Percy made some mention of this in one of his stories uh, of just, but I think that's one of the things that's, that from, as an outsider fascinates me about Judaism is the strength of that identity and cohesion when the identity and cohesion, well, when, when the identity that my, my, my heritage had didn't have that strength because it just kind of went away. It, it, it's not still there. I mean, I, I couldn't get together and, you know, some people are going to Stonehenge to visit and chant some things or something. But, but you know, I mean, I would never think of doing that. And it's just like that has nothing to do with who I am because my cultural background didn't have the staying power that I think the Jewish cultural background can have uh, at times. And I, I just find that interesting and fascinating. So. To a degree, I, I think why that is is yeah. because to a degree 
the larger white European culture excluded the Jewish culture. Sure. And sure. so the Jewish culture was never able to assimilate out all of its indiv individual characteristics. The state ghetto mentality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it was enforced upon us. It's not like we said, yeah. hey, we're going to build the walls around where we live and I you know, all keep out. You know, it, was, uh, for, it was enforced. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so historically, it, it's ironically, as we, the three of us sit here having this conversation, a lot of the reason that Dave and I have the depth of connection that we have is because this was in essence forced upon us by the larger white culture that our culture you know, trying to navigate. By the way, yeah, related sure. to that. It's just um, historical, you know, he's a, you historical, know, related to that. Um, I, I don't know if either of you have seen, it's a mini series, it was a mini series on TV called Unorthodox. Uh, no. it's a yes, yes, yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. Great show. Uh, great. It was yeah, yeah, yeah. terrific because what it, what it showed was it was like sh the mentality sh sh of shizzle. being in an ultra Orthodox community and this woman trying to break, how she bro broke out of it. But my point here is great. I was thinking in the connection again with our conversation and in anticipation of this conversation, I was thinking about the ultra Orthodox communities, their, uh, their isolationist uh, yeah. uh, white lifestyle yeah, yeah. Uh, to the point where you know it's like almost like 17th century still yeah uh, <laughs> yeah they want to go back to the shtetl it really is yeah. but look at it from a different spin they are protecting by doing what they do they're protecting their community and their community values that's the way their solution is that's how they protect it by isolation and very carefully guarded excursions into the secular world. The 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 it's series Stizzle, but just it, ratchet it yeah, up. Yeah, it, it, the 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 series Stizzle really, you know, it 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 did a remarkable thing. It 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 made the the you know the ultra orthodox community in 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 Jerusalem understandable. Right. And, I, and that I, have, way of, um, I have avoided that series, to be honest. Oh, it's it's terrific. I, I've heard very good things about oh, it, but I've I've avoided it. I, I just um, I I, I, wanna, I, I don't want to dive into it. I, I just but, let I, me. I don't want to dive into it. Let me ask this: Do you see? Do both of you see the Jewish heritage we've been talking about as a benefit, or? as you know you've talked about as a prison or as both i mean i'm, I'm just interested in alan you, know, you go first well <laughs> all right i listen I, I i grew up in a in a in a suburb of baltimore uh in the 60s and so i was born in 1959 uh that was 14 that years after, hmm. yeah the, 14 years after the camps were liberated and in my community, hey, my first Hebrew school teacher had a tattoo on her, you know, that had been stuck in her arm. Mm -hmm. uh, this piece of our, this connect, this connection to each other was was built in, and 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 yeah, this piece of of what it meant to be Jewish was was baked into my thinking really early on. Um, so when you ask, is an an advantage or a disadvantage? It 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 cuts both ways. Okay. okay. It it does culturally. Um, I'm gonna you know, all right. And I think despised as we have been for the reasons whatever they might be, I think we have we have not treated the world the way that the world has treated us. We have been rather Jesus like in our doing to others. And we have done really an awful lot to benefit the rest of the people on this planet with the product of our minds and, and other things that we do. Uh, there's a, a, a one, and we've talked about this in, in, in other podcasts, there, there's a, a, one of the core Jewish concepts is tikkun olam. Heal the world, repair the world. It, it is every Jew's obligation to make the world a better place just for having been in it. It is the core of do unto others. Right. And so in a way, oh, you know, I, I think of, we're kind of the, the, the flame keepers of do unto others. 
ironically enough. So that's that's how I would my ever so Jewish too many words you know, you've been talking with my <laughs> at the same time. Way to answer your, your question, Randy. Okay, I'm done. Tag, you're it, Dave. Okay. Um I you you've raised an interest, you reopened something in here by what you said about your upbringing. Uh, I was born in 1940, and so when the war ended, I was six years old, and I remember as a kid in the Bronx, um, the entire elementary school one day was taken on a field trip to a local movie theater, and guess what they showed the entire school? The filming of what the soldiers found in the camps when they were liberated. And that <laughs> seared into my head. And this is part of who I am, you know, and, um, and that was another chip that embedded in terms of what it means to be Jewish. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't have any family that was lost in the Holocaust. I had no family that was lost in the Holocaust, so I did Same not here. have any direct connection to that. Same here. But it's part of being Jewish, understanding that this is what happened. And that's kind of um, sort of a background, another background explanation for why it's so important, I think, in a place like America, for Jews, if they wish to maintain a Jewish identity, that they have to come together somehow in community. And that, you know, it, it, our, our Marty and I, my parental attitude, we're Jews so my kids are Jewish doesn't work. You need something much more than that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and, and that's, that's true. why, that's and, true. and in, in, the, in the US, it is true. that basic community, where do you find it? Much so we don't like the edifice, you know, the edifice complex story. Uh, we, where do you find it? Where do you find that? And you find it at the synagogue. Now, I will add to that, that millennials, um, I don't know what the current status is, but for the last 10, 15 years, at least, millennials have come upon a different way of approaching it. Hmm. Uh, there are a lot of millennials who are Jewish, who they don't like the edifice complex idea. They do not want to connect to an established synagogue situation because of everything, you know, the synagogue. They're, swimming they're so Jesus, they're so Jesus-y the that way. With the, with the bowling alley, you know, all of that kind of yeah. stuff. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. a bar mitzvahs that cost the family what some people take a yeah. year to earn, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. So what the millennials did was um, and, you know, uh, in the day of internet and social networking, they formed what, uh, what's the term? Affinity groups. Mm. And they community. would create events. Another form of community. They would create Jewish events and they would all connect by social networking. Okay, show up at seven o'clock at. And they would do a Jewish event. Where's no the synagogue? Where's the rabbi? Not anywhere in sight. But it's a Jewish connection a Jewish community that they form. Uh, and there is a certain reflection of that in some aspects of the Jewish movement in America. Uh, there are some rabbis that have uh, set up congregations where that kind of um, fresh approach happens. There's the whole Jewish renewal movement that started about 20, 25 years ago to freshen things up. But still, the important point is somehow maintain, create a community of like-minded Jews, and that's the way to uh, preserve identity as Jewish. Now, to, to, to bring our conversation around to a, <laughs> to a close, to an agnostic kind of a close, I'm going to flip this on, on Randy. Uh -oh. and, and, and you kind of you kind of started in this direction, but as you as you hear about, you know, people bound <clears throat> in this way. What happens inside? What happens inside your head? What's what? What goes through your mind? Does does this in any way sound appealing? The most unappealing thing on the planet. 
What yeah, if I, suddenly we were, we're, 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 we're Randy? I, I I just got some genetic testing back, and uh, everyone's been lying to you your whole life. Your real name is Mordechai. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel, Randy? How do you feel? <laughs> you know, I think uh, honestly, uh, part of me is a bit jealous of the depth of identity you have. Uh, granted that's a bit naive to say given how it was forged because it was painfully forged but you know the concept of me being white european is kind of like cold malto meal without any sugar or butter it's just it does nothing for me it it, it in no way lights up any part of me to think that i'm white european that means nothing it has no meaning for me um and so to have this tradition with specific things that you can gather around is something that speaks to a part of me that is pretty dormant otherwise. Um, and, and then on top of that, really my Christianity just makes that worse because, you know, as far as I can tell, there is no, well, there isn't a white European that had anything to do with writing any part of the text that I live my life by. I, none of it. It, it, is, it is all, almost all, if not completely, probably completely, written by Jewish people. And so, again, it's like there's a fascination, which is another reason why the way Christians have treated Jews, it's like this weird psychosis that makes absolutely no sense because you're saying, we worship this Jewish guy, but you Jewish people are terrible. It's like, it makes no sense you know, to me you at know, all. Sometimes the, the, the kids just turn out rotten, you know, the kids and they but turn on the parents and oh my God. It's just bizarre to me because it, it makes absolutely no sense. So, so my take on it is it, I find it very intriguing that the different types of things that, that Dave and Jessica have invited me to be a part of uh, intrigue me be, because there's something there that my heritage has no way to provide for me uh, that is deep and is meaningful or has potential to be meaningful. But I also understand, yeah, that if I figured out, oh, my name's actually Mordecai and my family and, you know, my parents adopted me and da 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 da, I, I would then have to grapple with Nazi Germany, say in a way that I haven't had to right now. I, I can do it from a distance and I can say that's horrible. And I can be totally embarrassed when I hear about the churches that went in line with that whole thing. And I can try to raise up the minority of pastors and churches that stood against Hitler in Germany. But other than that, I can't really do anything else. But But if I was actually, if that was my heritage, then I would then be forced to dive more deeply into it uh, as it sounds like both of you have had to do but Randy, again that's... uh but Randy's uh, awareness of that sure it's 90 percent of the game oh gosh yes and, oh and being the, the... to articulate it the way you articulate it is 90 percent of the game here mm -hmm. you, you are wrestling with god randy you are wrestling with God. You are actually doing it, my friend. <laughs> That's simply a fact. You, you, and that makes you an honorable Jew. I yeah, mean, I, an, an honorary Jew. An, an honorary Jew. Sorry. I love it. I love it. Okay. I'll, I'll have the papers drawn up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I've heard that there was, at least at some point, somewhere in Israel, there was like a place where they planted trees for the Gentiles that did significantly step up to hide uh jewish people and children from the whole nazi terror uh and, and uh and i've you know always thought those are the people at least that i can look up to are the 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 white europeans who stood up in the face of situations where they could have easily just done nothing and moved on with their lives it's it's, it's schindler's yeah. list yeah. In, in uh, somewhere in Jerusalem, I forget where there is a garden. I think it's called the Garden of the Righteous or something. Yes. Like that. that's, yeah, I think and that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is where the end of Shindu's recognizes um, 
the non-Jews who uh, were able to help during the Holocaust. Um, so that's uh, totally understandable. There's, this, this, this makes me weep. The end of Schindler's List kills me. Yeah, understood. As they, as they place a rock yep. on his memorial. Yeah. Yep. It speaks volumes. Yeah, sure. It speaks of eternity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, it gives it hope. Me. It gives hope that uh, deep down in most people, there is very good. There is very some good. And on that bombshell. <laughs> uh, we made Alan weep. We made Alan weep. I'm, I'm, I'm such a soft touch. <laughs> that's, that's, well, my, that's, that's my well, deep, dark, dirty secret. Now, and I, now I got to kill you all because you know oh. it. Go well, that it. was our goal. Dave and I had talked before, and we said, okay, let's. our goal is to make Alan weep. And and so, you know, high five virtually, Dave. <laughs> yeah, I, I think of that movie, and it just... Uh, damn. Oh, man. I mean, that's mind-blowingly powerful. I, it is. Anyway, you know, we we could go on and on and on. Well, Dave and I could go on and on just because we're, we're Jewish, and that's what Jewish <laughs> Especially older, older cockers like, like, like us do. Uh, and well, uh, you know what we you here's here's my crazy idea w what if we got Dave and Walter and we just did an all-out science oh go nuts oh my gosh that is... what what do you think would that be could that work I mean um, it's a interesting possibility yeah but you know, at the very least we ought to get Dave in and we just focus on that science. little tidbit he oh. left us there the science side we have but scratch the surface with yeah. with with, it, with Dave with Walter we hardly we, barely mentioned the word agnostic or atheist in this whole that's process. true that's true we may have to retitle it uh something about wrestling with God I, I think that might be a, a good well point. which is the nature of agnosticism so <laughs> there we are that's right thank you for joining Joining us today, Dave, and, and thank you, lot. everyone, yeah, for, for great listening. To have in. Everybody. Thanks, Dave. We will see you all next time. Thank you.